Hello everyone, here we talk about the uniform distribution and exponential distribution. They both are continuous random variable probability distribution. The typical experiment for uniform distribution is that we throw a pin in an interval. We assume that the pin can only land on the point between A and B which are the ends of this interval. The pin has equal chance to land on any point between A and B if we use random variable x to represent the landing point then this random variable follows uniform distribution. Here you can see the pin can only be thrown between A and B. That's an interval. Because of the equal chance on every point, we can imagine that on average, the landing point would be the center of this interval. So the mark is a plus b and divide by 2. For the same reason, we could use the measure for the length of interval to describe the probability that the pin may land in specific range. Obviously, this random variable is continuous random variable since the possible values fill up an interval between A and B. We can use the density function below to describe uniform distribution. Since we only assume the pin can land between A and B, so anywhere else would be zero chance, so the density is zero outside this interval. Within this interval, the density is reciprocal of the length of the interval. B minus A is the length of this interval. We can calculate the chance that the landing point will be between A and C in geometric way. Here we go. We measure the length between A and the C, which is C minus A. We measure the length between A and the B, which is B minus A. So the ratio will give us the chance that a pin can land in between A and the C. We can also give the two basic facts about this random variable, expectation, or average value is the midpoint of A and B. And the standard deviation for the landing point, which is length of square divided by 12 and do the square root. Similarly, we can get the probability that landing point is between C and D. The length between C and D divided by the length between B and A. So we come out a percentage or proportion of the length ratio. Again, think about if the edge moving when the interval between C and D getting smaller and smaller. The probability that landing point between C and D also gets smaller and smaller. Clearly, when C and D are overlap, that is C equals D, then we have the probability x landing between c and d would be zero since c and d are same. So we can also write it down probability x landed on c exactly and the probability landed in on d exactly would be zero. This gives us a very important feature for continuous random variable the probability for any continuous random variable taking any single value is zero. So in that case, when we talk about the event, the border could be ignored. You can either include the border or not include the border and the probability not being affected, like the expression shown at the bottom. Here's the example. The time that a dentist takes to perform an examination is thought to be uniform distribution in a range from 15 to 20 minutes. What is the probability that an examination will take 17 or fewer minutes? So here we can show you in the graph. So the distribution for 
the length of the examination between 15 to 20 minutes. That's a possible range, all the possible time. So now we talk about how much chance would be 17 or fewer. That means 15 to 17 minutes. So that would give us the green area. And we can use the area to describe the probability. So actually, we use the length. Le uh, we have the height representing the density value. Reciprocal, 1 over 20 minus 15 give us 0 0.2. So we can calculate 17 minus 15 divided by 20 minus 15 or multiply 0 0.2 give us 40% chance. That's the probability. What is the probability that the dentist examination will take 19 or more minutes? So this time we can see on the light blue area on the other end, 19 above. Similarly, we can get 20% chance the dentist examination will take more than 19 minutes. And we can use the conclusion being provided earlier about the mean and the standard deviation to get the number. So 17 minutes and a half. 17 and a half minutes is the average examination time. And 1.44 is the standard deviation. So the standard deviation means average distance for all the examination time to the center value 17.5. Now we talk about another typical continuous random variable probability distribution exponential distribution. When we use random variable x to represent the lifetime of a species or a product, this random variable usually follows exponential distribution. The possible lifetime could be any non-negative number. So the random variable is continuous. If a random variable follows exponential distribution and has average value 1 over lambda, the probability for this random variable to be between 0 and a can be expressed as 1 minus e with the exponent negative lambda multiply a. So you can see the reason being called the exponential distribution because the probability directly related to the exponential function. For a random variable with exponential distribution above, its standard deviation is also 1 over lambda, exactly the same as average value. Here are a few charts with different situation, means different uh, average value. So this is an exponential density function, or called the density curves. And the probability of an event actually being described by the area under these curves. So you can have visual idea about how the probability, sh probability shows. Here's an example. A community's 911 emergency call system receives calls, and the time between two calls follows an exponential distribution with a mean time between calls of 8 minutes. That means on average, each two phone calls. Well, we're seeing one and the next one. The two phone calls. On average, the time between two phone calls is 8 minutes. What is the probability that the time between two phone calls will exceed 14 minutes? So we need to understand our background. That means only parameter lambda should be figured out. 1 over lambda is average, so that means 1 over lambda is 8 minutes. In that case, we can solve lambda as 1 over 8, 0 0.125. And then we put our formula here and replace information into the formula. We are looking for exceed 14. So which is on the right side, above certain number. So that means we look for x greater than 14. The formula originally provide us which is smaller than certain number from 0. Well, bottom line is 0, lifetime. So we would use 1 minus this part, smaller than a, 
Here is a smaller than fit 14. We put the information in and we get the answer 0.174. And here show you where the probability shows on the right side the little tail, the area. And the meaning we got means the chance that the time between two codes will exceed 14 minutes will be 17.4%. Or we can say after we answered one for one phone call, we will have 17.4% chance to wait more than 14 minutes to get the next phone call. We also have Excel solution for you to work on the exponential distribution. So expon.dnst, that's exponential function in Excel. So you put a 14, that's what we need, x, and lambda 1 over 8, and the 1 means cumulative. So cumulative means the left side of 14 all included. So we use 1 minus this left side would give us right side. See you next time.